All right, so what I'm gonna start working on here is actually restoring this fuel gauge. Pretty sure it was working on the tractor. It's been a while since I've had the tractor running. Not sure I could apply some power to it and make sure it works. But I'm gonna focus mainly on cosmetics right now. So, a couple of things that I'm gonna do on this gauge. You can kinda of see how dingy the glass is. This glass I'm gonna actually pull out and polish that glass up. And you can see the light gray paint on the bezel. The bezel should be black. Probably like a satiny type black, but I'm gonna paint mine gloss black with a base clear coat. And then I actually have a new face that I'm gonna put on the gauge as a sticker. And on the back side, everything will be sandblasted and replated. And then the insides will just get a general cleaning up. So for starters, I'm gonna go ahead and just get the mounting bracket off. Which is just the nuts and the lock washers and brackets itself. Then the next part, if you attempt this on your own, be extremely careful with this. You're actually going to come in here in the back behind the bezel and you'll see where it's like crimped over. And you basically have to bend it straight to get it to slide off the face of the gauge. And I'll see if I can get it started and then show you. Because once get, getting it started is the hardest part. So I basically just took a small flathead screwdriver and laid it in there and started prying it out. Now of course this does stretch it. So when you go to put it back, you know it's a little a little loose, it's not perfect, but it's either that or replace these old gauges which Let's face it, the new gauges are junk. So I'd rather deal with a little loose of a bezel. So I'm just going to take and just work all the way around here, and prying that bezel up. Okay, so now I've got it pried up all the way around, and I'm kind of pushing it off. At the same time, going around and kind of spreading it just a little more. Okay, so there's the bezel coming off. You can kind of see the paint color on that. It's kind of like a semi-gloss satin black. Next up you have a rubber gasket. And then there's our piece of glass. And you can kind of see just how bad that glass is. So the next piece to come out is kind of this inner bezel. It's kind of cup shaped. You should be able just to get it right here on the edge and just kind of pop it up. You can kind of see how there has been water down in here and corroded this zinc and it's kind of white. So that we want to get rid of. Sometimes this will pop out. I know on the oil pressure gauge it will. But what I'm going to try to do on this one is go ahead and just unscrew the mechanism and see if all of it will come out. I 
we'll put that take that nut off and then we have an insulator here pull the other nut and the other insulator okay so now well, there's our gauge casing you can kind of see all the water damage inside of that this will all get sandblasted and replated okay and here is the actual gauge itself the on the oil pressure gauge the face is a plate this one looks to be another piece of thin metal that has been rolled over and crimped so we'll take and we'll pry that off and so there's our gauge face as you can see in this gauge there's also some rust and some water damage we also have these little wires in here but unfortunately these two pieces here are riveted to this case they are just kind of bent over so I might be able to get them out but I'm gonna to have to see because I definitely don't want to destroy this gauge if I destroy this gauge I gotta buy a new fuel sending unit and everything else I don't want to do that this may or may not get fixed I'm not sure just yet but we will definitely get this fixed and at least these two pins on the back the mounting bracket the inner cup and the bezel will all be sandblasted I guess I have a new face to put onto that and this hardware I may change it I may try to clean it up and reuse it we will see That's pretty much it on disassembling the fuel gauge. All right, so now I'm gonna start working on the oil pressure gauge. This one's gonna be a little more fun to fix versus the fuel gauge. That's because this stud is bent, which I mean, it, it bolted down and everything, but I would like to try to straighten that if I can. But to get this gauge apart, we're going to do basically the same thing that we did to the fuel gauge. The only exception is this one is not going to come fully apart. So it's going to be a little more fun to get it looking good. And the reason this gauge will not come fully apart is if you look here on the back, you'll see where it's been riveted. And that's basically the oil mechanism is riveted to the case. But on this gauge, I do have a new face. We'll clean the lens up and repaint the bezel. So just like the fuel gauge, come in here, start prying the bezel off. Now that I got it fully lifted, start prying. I'm going to start pushing it off. Okay, so there's the bezel off of the oil gauge. Next up is our rubber seal. And our glass. This rubber is like fused to this glass. Okay, so there's the rubber. 
Or, well, there's the rubber. So there's the rubber, and there's the lens. Pull this little ring out. Now, you can see on this one the faceplate is loose. So to get it out, you kind of have to pry it up and around the needle. Which is really fun to try to not bend the needle. But it can be done. Let's work the screwdriver into the side right there. Lift it up. And slide it out. So here's the inside of the oil pressure gauge. This plate is what is riveted. And here in the center, when this gets pushed on by oil pressure, your needle will go up. That's for bending these studs back. These studs are welded to this case. So I'm basically going to have to like heat this stud up and just kind of rock it back and forth to get it straight enough to where I can thread a nut onto it. But now it's time to get all this stuff cleaned up, sandblasted replated, painted, and put back together. All right, so I got the gauges all cleaned up and replated. I got the flare fitting nipple off of here so I can change it over to a compression fitting. This in here I didn't take apart just because of the way it's built. This plate and everything's riveted in, so I just left it alone. So I just covered all this when I sandblasted it. And one other thing I did was I took the needle and I painted it with some gloss white nail polish. So now let's get this one put back together. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a new face on to the gauge. And I have some that I just had made up a long time ago. These are nothing but stickers. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and stick it on there. Trying to line it back up the best way that I can. I got a little roller. We'll start working the air out of it. Okay, so there's no new gauge face on there. And these were made just a hair larger than the originals. I actually centered that one pretty good. So I need to come in here and just kind of trim out, and I especially got to trim where my needle goes. So there's that all trimmed out. So now I'm going to take the gauge face. Kind of slide it underneath the needle and it's going to set down into the housing on a couple of little perches in there. There's a 
locator tab on the very top of the gauge face. Right there's a little locator that goes right here. And then there's two other tabs that the face will sit on. So there's the new face in the gauge. You see how nice and shiny that is without any glass on it. I do have some fingerprints on it and I'm going to wipe those off real quick. There is about a sixteenth of an inch below the needle so it doesn't drag across the gauge face. Alright, so the next piece to go in is going to be this little spacer. I guess is about the best way to put it. This one I just replated and then put some black chromate on. That's going to go in next. And then on the glass. This glass had a lot of paint on it. And I took a razor blade and scraped that off. And then I took some 4 alt steel wool to clean up the glass. So it's clean as far as debris, however I need to clean it now with some glass cleaner to get it crystal clear. Okay, so there's my glass cleaned. So I got most of it, but unfortunately it looks like whoever cleaned the paint off this gauge the last time they painted this tractor used some kind of bad solvent or something and has made a place in the gauge face. But I'm going to run it anyway. I'll go ahead and set that in there. And the next thing and the last thing is the bezel. We've got our little rubber washer. It's going to set down into the bezel. And then we'll get the bezel snapped on. Okay, so there's the bezel snapped back on. And it's just some moisture from my hands. Now I gotta take and fold the lip back over. But before I do that I'm gonna put something down to protect the gauge. Okay so folding the lip back over is a little tricky. You gotta put downward pressure on the gauge and then you gotta kinda start just rolling the lip over. Okay, so once you get this thing to start rolling over, what I usually do is just pick it up, lay a screwdriver there, and just kind of rock and push all the way around. And then you'll eventually get it to where you can't spin it, and it's locked into place. And now you've got a restored oil pressure gauge. Okay, so that's the easy one fixed. Now we got to work on the fuel gauge. Now on the fuel gauge, I did end up taking the mechanism out. And what I did was I took a drill bit and basically just drilled these rivets off so that the coils here would come off. Now, when I put them back, I'm going to use a pop rivet to put them back. That's not correct, but it does work. And this piece will be encased in the gauge housing, and you'll never see it anyway. So, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and work on getting this mechanism back in. 
And this is very brittle, so be very careful with it. Okay, so now that I got this set in here, it's time to rivet it down. And I'm basically going to rivet this from the back side so that I can get the rivet tool in there. All right, so I finally got this thing installed. It ended up fighting me because, as you can see, I had to come in here and resolder. I ended up breaking the wires, messing around with it so much. The rivets initially didn't work. I don't know what the deal was. But when I would rivet these down, they would move. So I had to take it all back apart, and that's whenever I broke the wires. So when this time I put the rivets in there, I stuck some super glue underneath the little arms here to basically glue them to the housing. And whenever I riveted it down, it stuck good and tight. Super glue may or may not have helped, I don't know. But I did ohm it out. From pin to pin, I'm about 190. And from the top pin to the case, which is going through everything, is about 350. And I took it down to the 861 and plugged it into the 861. The needle does move, so my solder job was a success and everything's ready to go back together. So I'm going to set that aside for now. And we'll work on this gauge face. And there again, I just remade one. We'll get that put on there and trimmed out. Now this one here is not circular cut like the oil gauge. So, gonna have to give me a second trim it out. So same scenario, just line it up. Stick it down and we'll roll it out. Okay, so there's that one on. Now I just got to trim it. And there's that gauge. So just like the oil gauge, this one's going to go behind the needle. And then it'll snap on to place. And it had a couple areas where it was just kind of crimped down. I'm going to just take a uh, screwdriver and just kind of cramp that over just a little bit. So there we go. Now this whole mechanism will slide into the gauge housing. And I can go ahead now This rubber right here was made from an old inner tube. And you got like these like Bakelite type insulating washers. You put those on and then just snug them down. So now the next piece to go in is going to be this little trim ring. I'll sit down in there. That glass there is pretty much crystal clear. OK, 
Okay, and that's going to slide on top. All right, so one thing I almost forgot. This piece had like a gasket around here that was black. I don't really have any black gasket material, so I'm going to use this brown stuff. I'm just going to color it in with a Sharpie. But I was going to make a quick gasket that'll fit around in that hole there. So now that we got that bezel in there, we'll stick our little gasket in there. And then our new lens. Well, not really new. It's our cleaned lens that's original. Now, next is going to be the bezel with a little rubber washer in it. So now we push the bezel onto it. Glass is nice and tight. If you don't put that gasket in there, the glass will rattle around. So now that a bezel is on there, it's now time to fold it over. Just like we did with the oil gauge. So put it face down and just kind of press on it. And start rolling the bezel back over the lip. And once you get it in a couple places, you can pick it up, hold it in your hand, and just walk your screwdriver around it. Just kind of pushing the bezel lip back down to crimp it back into place. So there's our restored fuel gauge. So now, oh yeah, this this right here will go on it as well, which is restored. So now, it's time to get these in the dash and get the dash put on the tractor. Okay, so we got the dash all painted out. Went ahead and added the new plug from where I deleted the selecto speed. I do have a new charge light. Let me go over here. And the throttle rod grommet, plus my gauges. I'm going to go ahead and do the grommet first because that's kind of the easiest thing to put in. This is going to snap down into place. Next I'll go ahead and get the new charge light put in. Alright, so there's them two. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put the oil pressure gauge in. It goes all the way over here on the far right. And then our bracket will go on it. Got a new lock washer and a new nut. pressure gauge. Next up is going to be the fuel pressure gauge. They're not fuel pressure. The fuel level gauge. We don't have fuel pressure on this tractor. It's going to go over here on the far left. Now the center thing on this tractor is just a plug and I haven't got it 
fixed yet. You can actually see how different the paint color is. This is actually the gray on the later Thousand Series models. But I'll get that fixed and get it stuck there in that middle hole. The earlier models had the light there. Once again, new lock washers, new nuts. On this one, you need to try to center this pin as best you can because that's going to be your uh, one of your sending unit wires. fuel gauge installed. Now the next one I'm going to put in is going to be the proof meter. And that's just because the temperature gauge has this big long probe attached to it. Now this proof meter here, this is the one that has the original style needle on it. You can get them with or without this. Of course, they're different prices. I went ahead and painted the bezel to match my other gauges. This one has thumb screws on it, and I ain't too crazy about them. These are, this gauge is made in China, so they're metric. I currently don't have any metric screws this size, so I'm going to install it with the thumb screws. I may leave them, I may change it. And for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and leave the cap on the drive. But this one has a rubber grommet on here. That grommet will not fit into the hole on the dash. Which it never had this grommet anyway to begin with. No idea why it's there. So it's, it's going bye-bye along with the bag. <laughs> So, let's go ahead and put it up here in the top pole. And of course, this one being aftermarket does not have any locators like the original ones. So I'm going to get those kind of spun up. And flip it around and look at it and line it up. See, and the good thing about my tractor now being completely rebuilt, I have a proof meter that's all zeroed out. So I keep track of my maintenance. Okay, so there's the back side of that thing installed. And there's the front. So the last gauge is temperature gauge. And this one is also a new aftermarket gauge. If you look back in my walk around video, this gauge was chrome. These things were not chrome from the factory. So that gauge was a replacement gauge already. And since it's kind of a pain in the butt to deal with getting paint to stick to chrome, plus I got the original looking probe, I just replaced that gauge. This gauge also has a rubber o-ring grommet, whatever you want to refer to it as. Taking it off. And feed this probe down through here. And we'll install that gauge. And this gauge also does not have a locator. 
So I'll have to line it up visually. And I'll have to go get the right wrench to put on here. So there's my dashboard all finished with the exception of the center plug. This is now ready to go back onto the tractor.